Hi, welcome to chapter 5 of tutorial 1 for collections managers on SARS. So we've got up to the point where we've completed the first three tabs of our object, which is the general description and object history tabs. We'd like to finish up this object with the site association, images and attachment tabs. So I'm going to click on site association. In the site reference, this is not necessarily going to apply to you, this is only for people would like to record a, a site which from which the object came so archaeologists and paleontologists typically do this they excavate sites and they will then record the objects which have come from the excavation uh, but it equally could apply to a social history collection so the the object might come from a, a building or place or even a region that you'd like to define using the gis mapping tools on saurus so there's quite a lot of flexibility in the what you can link to the site so you're spatializing where the object came from uh, another interesting way to play around with that is a particular region may have been uh, a certain size at a time in the past and you'd like to map that uh, on SARS so create a site use the detailed mapping tab and then map the that site at that particular time in place and then this object uh, can be linked to that spatial component I'm going to uh, click on search. If you know the code, the site code reference, you can just start entering it and the auto search will kick in. But I'm going to click on search so I have more options. And I'm going to link this site to the Castle of Good Hope in Cape Town. Um, so under the full site name, I'm going to change this to contains and uh, let's try castle. Filter by that. Oop, didn't do that properly. Let's try it again. And there we go. So the castle of good hope, there's its site code, and it's entered the node ID number next to the site reference. So this is going to work. You can link it to multiple sites uh, by clicking on add another item. The following fields are pretty straightforward. They only apply really to archaeologists and paleontologists. So when you excavate, you might have a grid reference, a stratigraphic unit, a spit and core context, and then an XYZ coordinate if you are piece plotting your artifacts from the excavation. So for the rest of you, this again won't apply. If you do uh, excavations, this is going to be very relevant to you. The next tab um, is images, and then the last one is attachments. Um, the images tab works just like the other fields for images on SARS. So you can click on choose file and upload one image at a time or you can click on advanced upload and upload multiple images at, at a time. So let's show how that works. So if I click on advanced upload, and I, I can either drag the files into this window over here, or I can click on the blue link for add files. And I'm going to pick some demo images I downloaded and select them, open them, and this queues up those images for upload to Saurus. If I change my mind, I can take one of these off by clicking on the red link before uploading. If I'm satisfied with my selection, I can click on start upload and then it punches through and uploads the images to the object. You can upload as many images as you like as long as each image is less than 10 megabytes. So the total size of all your images might come up to 100 megabytes or 200 megabytes or 300 megabytes or whatever it is, but the individual image limit is 10 megabytes. The two fields below each image, once you've uploaded them, uh, allows Google to index the names of your images or the, what was on the image uh, more easily. So I usually use the same text for both of these fields. So you might say, you know, grid of colors or something like that, for that one. And then for the other one, let's just do something really simple. Right. Um, then if you change mine again, after all of that, you can click on remove on that link and that will remove the image in question. The last tab is attachments. Again, very straightforward. You can upload PDFs of documents which relate to this object. Please do not upload anything that is copyrighted because uh, the website is Creative Commons, has a Creative Commons license. So just watch out for that. If there's something that is copyrighted, simply reference it under the description tab, the, under the reference list uh, for further information about the object. And if people have rights to the document in question, they can um, access that 
want from your reference. Right, so that's about it for creating objects. In the next chapters, we'll look at condition assessments, valuations, and some of the reports on SARS for managing the, uh, the collections. And we'll also look at the movements, how to handle transfers and accessions and loans on SARS. At the end, don't forget to hit save. And there's the end. So we now see our code and then our auto generated ID number for our object. The common name we use, the classified name, um, the owner, the group audience, the mode that the object has been set to, uh, and then the various tabs break out the various pieces of information we captured, a link to the site, and then the images are arrayed here. If we uploaded PDFs, we would have also seen the PDFs uh, available for this particular object. Thank you. That'll be the end of this chapter. It'll move on to the following sections in the next chapter.